Hi everybody, I'm Tom Matuska here with the Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company along with Brett Wingfield and uh, today we're going to talk about ear liners, taking cartilage out, we're going to show you how to take cartilage out, we're going to talk about uh, the bonded ear method um, for ear liners and uh, everybody has a lot of questions, we encourage you to you know, um, write in with your questions, um, text us with your questions and we'll try to answer them as we're going. Um, ear liners are a complicated issue for many taxidermists, especially uh, beginners who haven't done this before. And um, so we're going to try to demonstrate what we think is, a, is the best method to do this. A lot of this is absolute magic to people. They just are baffled by how you get the ear liners out. And uh, we're going to show you our magic today. So um, to start with, I want you all to look. I have nothing up my sleeves. Okay. Look at that, a deer cake. Ta -da. <laughs> uh, now, it doesn't matter whether you, whether you send your capes to a tannery or if you tan them yourselves. This one um, went to H&H &H Tannery. They did a beautiful job on it. And um, when we get it back, there is still some prep work to do. Um, a lot of people think that they're ready when they come back from the tannery. Most tanneries will do the machine fleshing for you. They do an exceptional job, but there's still a whole lot of prep work before this um, head is ready to mount. Doesn't matter whether it's a whitetail, mule deer, elk, moose, whatever it happens to be, there's still uh, things to do. Now, when we get a cape ready to send to the tannery, we will split the ears to their edges we may stay back just a little little ways because oftentimes the tanneries will tumble your cape and sometimes it will get split, the ears will get split. Um, we split the eyes, we split the lips, we take the cartilage out of the nose and we flesh them really, really thoroughly. <clears throat> Goes to the tannery, comes back. Now for those of you that are doing them yourself, um, some of you have pressure tanners where you actually tan the hide before you do a lot of fleshing. Um, others of you probably, they go into a pickle and you get them to this stage and then start doing your facial work. No matter what you do, um, there's two methods of doing ears that I know of um, that are, you know, that work pretty well. One is removing the cartilage. This came back from the tannery with the cartilage in. And then there's the bonded method. Um, we're going to show you how to remove this cartilage. And then we'll also talk about the bonded method for those of you that are interested in that. Um, in order to use an ear liner, which we prefer to do, we think we get the best results, this cartilage has to come out. And I'm going to give this to Brett, and while I'm answering questions and kind of demonstrating things, um, I'll try to explain what he's doing. And while he's doing it, because it will take, take a little while, it's not an instant thing to get a, the cartilage out, and that's why a lot of people, you know, don't like this method um, but anyway he's going to demonstrate how to do that and I will um, walk you through it as he does it and then feel free to answer or to ask any of your questions and I'll answer them. There what you go. Kind of big hole. Big holes are fixable. That's what we do. <laughs> I hope um, so. Taxidermy work we've been finishing up at the tax Northwest Iowa School Taxidermy um, this week and and I tell the students all the time it's not how good you are it's how good you can fix things because Taxidermy is nothing more than fixing what you messed up. And the better you get, the less you're going to mess up, the less you have to fix, and the more profitable your business becomes. Um, now, the first thing I like to do when I get a cape back from the tannery and I start the prep work, when I get to the ears, you have to split the ears to the very, very edges. I prefer not to take my cartilage out before I send them to the tannery because I feel um, that cartilage helps prevent damage to the ears while going through the tanning process. If we tan them in-house, um, we use uh, Trubon 1000 or Liquitan um, or um, Lutan F. Um, we do all those methods here and get a great tan, I will probably take the cartilage out first. The cartilage comes out off of a fresh animal much easier than it does from a tan hide. Jeremy Lee says, every once in a while when I split the ears, I'll have one that's really tough and I'll blow through the ear trying to open it. Any way to help with this? Usually hides become dry. When the ears, customers will bring a deer to us and it's maybe uh, 
um, hung in their garage or you know in their barn or whatever and they didn't get it to us fresh a fresh hide splits exceptionally well um, we will use ear splitters and we'll actually go in and split the ears um, when uh, we come to a dried spot uh, we have to go very very slow and rather than use the ear splitters on a dried ear I will go as far as I can and then I will stop and do the rest with a knife. I will actually turn a bat or a stick inside out, turn the ear inside out, and uh, take um, the cartilage, or turn the cartilage out. We're just making sure we've got this one to the edge before we start taking the cartilage out. I think it's pretty well there. If you don't split them to the edges, you're gonna end up having to come back and do it again later. So before we start removing the cartilage, we like to make sure that we're split all the way to the edges. And you can usually stick your finger inside of the ear and feel the edge. And if it feels like there's a cord in there, you're going to want to go a little bit farther. Yeah. I like to use a number 11 scalpel for this. I, I think I cut smaller holes with it. Um, with that number 11 knife. scalpel, if you use just the very tip and scratch rather than cut, don't slice, scratch along the seam. If you make a hole, most often it's not even necessary to repair it because your um, glue will not leak out a tiny hole so this is a uh, you do need to be pretty careful you don't want to make big slicing motions and cut big holes where your glue is going to come out we're missing our number one tech chicky Kirsten so I'm trying to take over for it and it's not as easy as she makes it look but I did notice she's watching from her conferences she's supposed to be at so <laughs> Kirsten, Kirsten we miss, we miss you, you. <laughs> Um, so for those of you just tuning in, we are talking ears and methods, techniques, all that. You can feel free to comment and ask your questions and the guys will answer them. We've been doing live videos now since beginning of January every week. So if you like this one and find it interesting, we're doing it every Thursday at 4.30 Central Time. And if you've missed them in the past, you can go ahead on our Facebook and scroll down to the videos and you can catch up on all of them for the tips and tricks that the guys have been talking about. I'll split to the edges? I think so. I'm um, ready to start taking it out. Okay, now what, what we usually do here, and there's lots of different ways to do it, I like to, and I think what Brett's going to do, is actually fold that ear over kind of tight, the cartilage, the cartilage side. Yeah, you might want to show him this maybe. And then he's going to take his number 11 scalpel and he's going to scratch along that ridge line. Right here, I'm about halfway across. And I'm just gonna score through really carefully. Now the reason, reason Brett's doing this in front of you live is because I'm chicken. <laughs> I cut a hole. It's a good chance I could cut through, but hopefully we're not gonna cut through the backside. Now, the way he's doing this, you don't have to cut all the way through that cartilage. Cut through it part way and then by wiggling it back and forth that cartilage will actually break and all the way through to that ultra thin skin on the inside. We don't want to cut that ultra thin skin on the inside. This process takes practice. Um, when you start trying to take ear cartilage out, don't, don't start on your customer's 200 point white tail buck. Um, get a small deer, maybe your own, or maybe one that uh, somebody didn't want, maybe gave you the cape for a trade for an antler mount or whatever, um, practice this. It will go, if you've never done it before, it goes exceptionally slow. Um, you will think that the hair's gonna start falling out before you get the cartilage out. But with practice, the first one will take you maybe an hour, the next one will take you 45 minutes. The next cape that you do, you're gonna be down to a half hour, 20 minutes of time, and pretty soon it'll be a very fast process to get your cartilage out. The reason we take the cartilage out is we are gonna replace this cartilage, and the cartilage, for most of you know, pull down your ear, has a memory, and your ear snaps back into its position. We're gonna take the cartilage out, and we are gonna replace it with an ear liner. And we're going to actually glue this up into the ear skin and that's going to give us our white tail shape, mule deer shape, elk shape, whatever we happen to want the animal we're wanting to do, um, it's going to give us that shape. Which favorite ear liner to use? 
Um, there's a lot of good ear liners out there. I need something that the glue is going to stick to. So, um, if I were to buy a commercial ear liner that's real slick like this, I have to treat it somehow. Um, lots of times, do you have your little, uh, how about that little scratcher thing here? Yeah. This is our, our detail rougher. And if I'm using a commercial ear, ear liner like this, I will scratch it with this. Everybody treats these differently. And I rough them up, something that my glue is gonna stick to. Um, another way of treating this type of ear, a lot of people will put them in lacquer thinner and this actually turns molten. It starts melting the plastic and you can press sawdust into it. And if you do that, I think I have one here somewhere. Here, I did have, oh there we go, thanks. Um, if you do that, it, it coats your whole ear liner with sawdust and we use a fine sawdust. It did not add any um, thickness, that unwanted thickness. And that gives something, it doesn't come off, it gives something for my glue to adhere to. Um, in a previous life, I used to take a little Dremel tool um, with a small drill bit and I would drill a billion holes into my ear liners. I just literally perforate them. You need something on those slick ear liners. You need to turn that plastic into something that the glue will bite to. Uh, a great ear liner that we like to use are these fabric for, form ear liners. And uh, this one is a, uh, um, a mule deer by Brian Olson and we have an exceptional elk also. It's made out of fabric form, it's called. Some people call it celastic. It's not actually celastic. It's a plastic with almost like a gauze material on both sides. And the texture of the material is very conducive to a really nice bond between your ear skin and your ear liner. Um, so these are great. We got these in we got these in every African animal you can almost ever think of. We got them in exotics. They're these are actually cast, molded and cast from fresh animal ears. So it's not something that somebody just said, "Oh, that looks like a deer ear." That sell it. Um, these are designed really from the animal. There's a lot of good ear liners out there. Um, a lot of people say, you know, like. Uh, Small, medium, and large. Do we want small ear liners, medium ear liners, large ear liners? In our area here in Iowa, um, if I take in 100 deer, I would say 98 of them are going to be medium, medium ear liners, uh, white tail ear liners. I'm going to have maybe one large, which is unusual for here, and rarely will I have a small, but I may have one small out of 100. Okay, now come and look at how this peels off if we can get a close up of this. Another thing I noticed um, Brett doing is, is as you're peeling, sometimes your skin will actually come delaminated. It's almost like a layer comes off and you get hair pulling through um, uh, and it sticks to your cartilage. Yep, had a little bit of that right here. Yeah, so I had to and if you spray it with again. water, um, it kind of takes care of that. It'll keep that from happening. So he's, he scored it all the way across, got his fingernail under there and pulled towards the end of the ear and then he will take that piece off. After removing the cartilage, what is the best way to repair tears in the front side of the skin? I had a tear in the front side of this one and uh, we just sewed it up. If it's, a, if it's just a little tear, um, fine thread and fine stitching works well. Third one on this side? Yeah. Sure. Sometimes, um, if there's something missing, we actually have to patch it. Yeah, that's how just to... And that's a, a few little structure. stitches took care of that, and it's not anything that's going to show. Um, if it's an actual hole, which happens sometimes, we will take maybe silk span like we use on our fish fins, cut a little or tear a little piece of silk span, and um, patch it with super glue, just enough to get the ear liner in so the glue doesn't ease out, ooze out. Um, or we have even taken a thin, thin layer of flesh off the fleshing machine and glued it onto there also. Um, you just wanna stop that hole so that your hide paste doesn't, or whatever, your epoxy, whatever you're gluing your um, ear liner in with doesn't ooze out. 
Um, Adam Lubenthal, do you prefer a small hole near the tip of your ear so you can squeeze glue and air bubbles out to prevent drumming? I'm not sure that's not a good idea to do, but not for me, probably. Um, I'd probably use a big knife and cut too big a hole or something <laughs> like that. Uh, not a bad idea. What I have done, if I have an air pocket that I absolutely can't get out, I would rather take it out with a dry syringe. Stick a syringe in and suck the air out and let it, you know, suck right back to the back of the ear liner. Um, I don't have a problem with that. It's just not my method, I guess. Um, when using a fabric liner, do you use, um, do you use, save the inner ear detail from the cartilage? I do. Yep. Um, that all came from, I thought it was my invention. I thought um, I had to come up with a competition deer. Um, I had to do something down in here. And there's the inserts you can put down in. I had tried modeling down in through all that hair and everything. And it's difficult. And I could get it done. And I thought, wow, that looks really good. My right ear looks really good. My left ear looks really good. They don't look anything alike. Um, I found it very difficult to make both the same. It's working down in that hairy little canal was difficult. So I was doing a competition deer once and I thought, I wonder what would happen if I left my ear canal cartilage on to give me shape, took my ear liner and built an ear butt on it and glued that up in so that I could stick the real cartilage down inside like I think on this one I left this on like the here's the little canal we're down to about a pea size down here and as soon as you go over the hump right here that's where I cut my cartilage off and I thought I'm kind of weighing the points thing thinking I'm gonna lose two three points for shrinkage but I'm gonna gain it somewhere rather than having a real bad sculpture job down in my ear the comment from my judge was excellent inner ear detail and I thought, yes. So I've done it about three times on competition deer and got away with it every time. Um, it may, the cartilage will shrink a little bit, and but it it's, looks pretty darn good when you look down in there. Um, it's kind of a cheaty way to come up with pretty satisfactory results. And it's easier than peeling that cartilage off of that inner ear canal. Um, and it's something we do for all of our customers. We used to put epoxy down in there and we would try sculpting it and there's that little ear tool you could dip in yeah. water and stick yeah. down in there that I, I think research used to carry those. And uh, we had all kinds of little things, little wood tools that we would try to sculpt them and it takes 20 minutes per ear. It added a tremendous amount of time to our mounting um, and this is instant. Just by not taking it out and by leaving it in packing it down in a little bit of clay bed down there, and I get away with it pretty good. So I'm all the way peeled down, and I'm gonna leave that cartilage on and just sure. soft one. Now he's done exactly what I had done. He's peeled down to here. Now he's just gonna cut the ear cartilage off, discard this. Now, another thing, if you have an ear liner, you can take the cartilage that you removed and you can take the ear liner that you're planning on using and you can wrap it around and line it up and have a pretty good idea how good of a fit you're gonna have. That's a good thing to do, to have these. I used to have a fellow work for me by the name, I think I brought his name up before, by the name of Bubby Coon. And anytime Bubby took out cartilage out of my ears, they were always zip tied to the cape for me. And he had one thumbnail that he groomed for taking cartilage out of the ears. And um, it looked like something that you would shuck oysters with. It was a very grotesque looking fingernail, but <laughs> he groomed it specifically for cartilage and it worked. So that's the ear with the cartilage off. Um, now you might have to come back like I did too. Sometimes you get these little little tags and you just come back and peel those out individually. Yeah. Now, once your cartilage is out, um, don't let it dry up before you put your skin in because you're gonna wanna, uh, um, you want nice supple skin that was that's nice and stretchy. 
Mandy, while you're here, we can show them too. Sometimes I like to split these if I'm it's a little bit of a tighter fit. There's a little ridge line here that's on the inside of the ear. And then there's another one over here and over here. And sometimes it's nice just to split down. I've got a little hole from taking it out right there. If you ever have drumming ears and you want to gain a quarter inch in, in girth on your inner ear, um, by splitting those little ribs that run down the length of the ear, um, you can gain quite a bit of width yeah, on the inner can ear. See how, how much that's opening up. And I think, Tom, you can, you can weigh on this too. I think one of the keys to having a, an ear that doesn't drum is a nice loose fit. Um, you wanna, you know, anything that's tight in the leather world is going to shrink. And when it shrinks, right um, Leroy Martinez used to sell uh, an ear epoxy that we used to use all the time. And he said the reason for drumming is your skin dries before your adhesive sets. So you want um, a nice, comfortable, loose fit. You don't want to have so much, um, so much slop that you don't know what to do with all the skin. You're going to want to have the right, right fit of an ear liner, but you want it nice and loose so that if it shrinks, it does not pull away from the inner ear. And splitting those is very helpful. Um, another thing, carefully, carefully stretching that ear skin before you put the ear liner in is very helpful and a moist ear that's not started to dry. We're talking about white tail ears. Mm -hmm. Would you do anything different for anything, any of the small game or other animals? I, I, I would do this for any of the big game like moose, elk, um, white tail, mule deer, black tail, that sort of thing. Um, when it comes to smaller animals like bobcats and coyotes. Um, we also have fabric ear liners. You can purchase ear liners for those. Um, you can purchase ear liners that index right into your head. Um, a lot of people will go with the uh, bonded ear method on little animals, a little tiny animal like a squirrel. Um, I don't know if it's right or wrong, but it works pretty good for me to take a little pea size of epoxy sculpt or critter clay and stick it up in the ear. I'm not going to take the ear cartilage out of a squirrel for commercial purposes, um, but you can shape, squeeze out that that uh, epoxy to an ear liner thickness and then just allow it to set and you put in a, a malleable type material and made an ear liner out of it. Some animals, coons and, and badgers, I'm not opposed to using the bonded ear method with uh, auto body putty and polyester resin and a little reinforcement. That works pretty good for smaller animals. So do you always do the ear liner method or is there ever an instance that you'll use bondo ears? Um, we do bondo ears on like badgers and coons, I would say. And for that, um, we take a auto body putty and I'm not sure if the brand makes a big difference. We refer to it as bondo ears. Bondo is a brand. Um, this is not Bondo, it's called Auto Body Master Lightweight Body Filler. Um, we use it in the shop, it's inexpensive compared to a lot of them. Um, you probably won't fix a Corvette with it, you know, it's more... $39.95 we 30, sell it for a gallon. Um, now, it's like putty. This is fiberglass putty. It's pretty thick to put into your ear, um, so we thin it. And we thin it with polyester resin. We thin it into a um, pudding type consistency and then to reinforce it I put in the fiberglass mat. I will chop this with the scissors and I will stir it up so what I'm really doing is thinning the putty with the polyester resin and reinforcing it with this. I've done that for years and years and years only to find out I can go up to the auto parts store and I can find it already made in a can like that. Um, you can get reinforced with fiberglass. Um, you can buy it that way, or you can make it yourself. If you make it yourself, thin the putty down a little bit, add some reinforcement, or you can buy it too, that way. Then you have to add a catalyst. We just use the cream hardener catalyst. When you use the bonded ear method, you're gonna wanna leave your cartilage in. Your cartilage will give you the shape 
give the ear the shape. You, you're gonna wanna leave the cartilage in. Um, take a, uh, we use tongue depressors like for stir sticks, we mix it up. We will put it inside of the ear and using the cartilage and the ear skin to contain the putty mixture, you're gonna shape that ear. It takes a little bit of practice. Um, ha having never done it before, you're gonna get lumps and bumps and, and you do have a window of opportunity. If something went wrong, you can pull that Bondo ear out of there. You've got, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes and you can scrap that idea and start over. Um, so you can pull them out. Um, what about washing ears? Oh, when we, ear prep is really, really important to making these stick. The worst thing that can happen in the whole ear business is drummed ears. Drummed ears means this skin, usually on the inner ear, it never drums around the outside usually. It will drum, meaning the inner ear skin will dry and pull away from the liner so that people will get their deer home and they will feel them and they'll go crinkle, 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 and pretty soon they'll push their finger through that drummed skin. Quinn must have control of the phone because there's a lot of faces going by. Oh, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Quinny. <laughs> um, so you have to treat two things. You have to treat this so that the, so that the glue's gonna stick, the adhesive's gonna stick, and there again, <laughs> on the smooth ones, I'm gonna use my detail rougher. This is an excellent tool for both roughing this, and we'll have Brett put in that ear liner, and he can use this to adjust it. And then, so I'm gonna rough this up. There's other materials. You can paint this with uh, um, Gary Bowen's uh, mannequin prep. You know, you can spray that on here. You just need something that that glue is gonna to stick to. Then, you want to take care of the ear skin also. Usually during the tanning process, this got oiled. And there's oil penetrated into that skin, and you need to get that oil off. So we will take a little bowl of lacquer thinner, a little wire brush, and scrub that ear skin really, really good. Once I scrub the ear skin, I like to take my rougher, and really careful, don't get crazy, and I will rough it, and actually, all I'm doing is touching it, basically, and pulling up. Don't, don't tear them apart. And when you do that, you're suading this, and that's gonna give, that suede is gonna give your adhesive something to really stick to. So if you wash it with lacquer thinner, we'll even take a hair dryer and blow off the excess, um, lacquer thinner, you don't want them saturated with lacquer thinner, you want them somewhat dry, just about like this is. Treat that, and then we're gonna put our adhesive on here and insert our ear. Wanna try to put one in, see what happens? Yeah, absolutely. This is a 200WT. 200WT, cast from an actual um, deer. These, these fabric ear liners. Um, Quindolin, stay away from the angry face. Incidentally, um, these uh, ear liners can work very good if you choose to leave your cartilage in. Some people want to leave the cartilage in, yeah. and they will glue an ear liner like this in. These are thin. These are thinner than any commercial ear liner, and they're strong, super, super strong. Now, he's good sticking fit. it in. This is a little bit easier to do once you have glue on your ear liner, but um, um, stick it in and make sure you have a nice, loose fit. No matter what ear you use, you can trim them yes. slightly to an extent. The fabric are really nice to trim up to any yeah. size that you need. Yeah, we have a nice loose fit here. Everything sits against the back of the ear liner. Sits in there really nice. So how do you explain mounting a deer before and I've seen them at a customer's house and the ears seem to have close up and curly slightly. What's going on? Um, I've had that happen with Bondo ears. Um, I had a customer who I did lots and lots of work, and I gave the bonded, Bondo ear method a real shot for two, three years because it is much faster. Um, and I did it on a customer's antelope, and uh, I needed to sport, store his things when he had some family issues, and he brought it down, and, uh, and the antelope ear was curled up about like this. Ooh. I mean, it was like, I said, what happened? He said, well, he said, I hung it up, and it did that a couple weeks after I got it back and it was a, bond, a bondo ear. So that kinda, not necessarily that it was 
Bondo ears are bad, but my method of doing it and my expertise in the yeah. thing. Do you thin the edges of the liner any more than how they are shipped? Depends on who you get them from, I think. Yeah, these are these are very thin for a fabric ear liner. And if you wanted to, you could touch them just quickly on a belt sander, but I don't see any. No, these are already commercial. thin, yeah. yeah they're very and for a large game, those ear liners are actually, you can buy them as double thick. It's a $10 charge, and you can get them. For the stiffness, yeah. 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 Yep. yeah. yeah, and get those. Um, Cape Buffalo, Kudu, Kudu, any, I mean, they're already pretty stiff, but for Cape Buffalo and, and Kudu and big ears like that, um, a lot of people choose the double thick ones. Who tans your capes? Um, we've used a lot of tanneries. There's a lot of good tanneries out there. Um, like I said, uh, this one came from H and H, and um, Wildlife Gallery does a good job. There's whenever choosing a tannery, don't pick one off the internet. Get references. Make sure that they're reputable. Um, I've been in this business 40 years, and there I've seen more tanneries come and go, and you don't want them to go when they've got your hand, your hide. So. Um, make sure they're reputable and have been around and and uh, When you go to the taxidermy shows, I mean you will the same names will come up all the time as reputable tanneries Have you tried Epo grip ear magic for small mammals instead of bondo method? Um, I have not I have it's basically the same um, it, it you would mix it. It's gonna put in a liquefied ear liner you mix it up I put a little fiberglass mat in it um, just to give it a little bit of strength, but it seems to work pretty good. Did that with a few small game animals um, long ago, but it worked pretty good. Now this is a really, really nice fit. Um, when you insert your ear liner as a test fit, always test fit them. Always check the edges and make sure that, make sure that your ear tip doesn't flip over like this. That means you're not split to the edge. Um, this one has been really split to the edge. There is no area of that ear not split and it fits on here beautifully yeah that's a nice fit in here what do you like to use for a glue we have used every glue imaginable <laughs> we've made our own glues we've done everything we've come back to the old ones um, um, for years and years I used the epoxies mm -hmm. you know the two-part yep. epoxies yep. Um, we get uh, we have one that we carry that's a slow set. We have a fast set. The fast set for experienced people works very well. Um, the fast set for people who have not done this a lot might be too fast. It sets in about 20 minutes to a half hour. Um, the slow set will give you, I think, four to six hours. Um, it's very similar to Magic Smooth. Um, that's a good glue. We have Roman 555, which is an excellent, excellent water-based glue that will give you tons of time to work, but you can't just put it in, walk away, and expect it to stay that way. You gotta come in tomorrow, double check, make sure everything's looking good. Um, might have to touch something that dried away a little bit. Um, Derm Grip, we like Derm Grip. Derm Grip works Latex well. caulk. Yep. Yeah. Lonnie Wells says, love your glow eyes. Try them on a life size bear and the client really loves them. They do, don't they? Nice. Yeah. They're talking about, so if those of you that don't know, we carry these reflective eyes all the way from Russia, and we're the only ones in the U.S. that carry them, and they're awesome. They really give that extra life-like life, life -like touch to the animal. Um, can you bring your little uh, camera down here and show the people the inside of this ear? Because the inside... We left the cartilage in. Now this isn't even glued. We left the cartilage in, and that's the look you're going to get. That's how it'll dry. And all you'd need is a little, um, a little flesh down in there, and a little detail to cover up your dried-looking skin when it's dry. And um, that's a pretty nice detailed ear canal. Did you have to push a tool in there to form it around? Or nope. We just left the cartilage on. Yeah, yeah that's going to be. And then kind of kind of get some good pictures and learn about um, what an ear looks like. Our ear has what's called guard hairs, and these protect the ear. This these long white hairs on the top. You have those too. In my ear? <laughs> You're funny girl. Um, these actually come across the face of the ear. They protect the ear from wind and bugs. I always say they're like that foam 
um, cushion on the end of a microphone yeah. that you know you yeah. see the foam. It's kind of like that. It's a damper for wind, keeps the bugs out of the ear. So you'll want to adjust that, and then it won't take you very long before you figure out that there's a inner ear hair and the outer ear hair come together in a real nice seam, and you're going to work that on the finished finished ear. And what ear liner are you using again? Um, these are the WT 200s. 200 WT, 200 WT. Jerry Nissen. Um, they are in the catalog. They're a fabric ear liner that you guys cast from an actual mm -hmm. white tail. And these don't have ear butts. You would build your ear butts out of clay. And the way we do that, we model them on our ear, on our head. Um, we asked you in one of those over there. Sure do. We use these casts. This is a uh, ears back by Mark Gonnering, and it's a sculpture of the ear butt. And we will actually take an ear and we will rebuild this out of clay onto here. We will mo model it onto our mannequin. We will paint it with our, our glue, let it sit overnight, pop it off, and you have just made an ear butt for this, which will index right back to your form. And we'll demonstrate this in one of the next sessions, um, how we model ears. And we have that cast, the Mark Honoring cast, in ears forward and ears, there you go, ears forward and ears back. They're a great, great reference tool. It's something, a 3D thing that you can actually hold and you can see where the muscles go. And if you use this and model on your ear butts, even if you do it wrong, it's going to be better than that person cramming in a bunch of clay from the backside. You always see uh, Mark and Brian and the guys doing their ear seminars at the Wisconsin and Iowa show and stuff like that. Yeah. And they always, always have those holding. Yeah. So these are some uh, reference pictures. Actually, we've raised white-tailed deer for 30 years, over 30 years. Yeah. Yep, yep. And you've always taken really good pictures. So we have a reference CD that holds, like this one is just ears. Um, it's the CD ear and it comes with all sorts of good pictures that shows alert, aggressive, back, forward, all that kind of stuff. And we also have the eye one too. I don't know, there's like dozens and dozens of good ear shots mm -hmm. on really there. Good ear yeah. Shots. It has, this one has 75 photos. But reference, reference, reference. That's right. Um, yeah. Hold on, guys. This is really hard to do without Kirsten. I miss her. <laughs> Kirsten. Um, to me, ears are as important as eyes. If you, um, if you have a cross-eyed deer with, with uh, good ears, it's not going to fly. If you have, you know, beautiful-eyed deer with bad ears, it's not going to fly. You know, you kind of have to correlate the two, and you can create really nice expressions by eye position and ear movement. Yep, ear attitudes make a lot of difference. It seems like you can pick it out across the room. Jerry Nissen, yes, it is a 200 WT, no space if you're looking it up online. Um, they also have the 200 MD and the 200 EK, which is a similar, and the 200 BR, the bear, elk, and mule deer, sim similar ear liner. Um, the elk and the mule deer are probably the finest, and that white tail, probably the finest shaped ear liner on the market. They're nice. Um, Jeff Schneider says, just had a seminar last weekend by Mark Gonnering, and must say, those are nice reference casts. <laughs> They're always there. Mark, right. Mark does nice work. Um, do you ever staple carding to the inside to hold the skin while it dries when using the 555 paste? Yeah, you absolutely could. Um, a good fitting ear may not need it if, it, mm -hmm. if you keep it moist and dry, or moist rather than letting the skin dry out before the adhesive grabs, but um, if you're we, running into that problem, that we've done it. Yeah. What what happened here? Usually, if you have to do that, something's there's a fly in the ointment. Um, something went wrong somewhere. Either this is too tight, your glue dried out before this could dry. There's probably yeah. something wrong. Um, ideally, if I don't have to do that, I know I did something right. Occasionally, when I leave my deer for the night, I will take a little sandwich bag and slip it over each ear so that it doesn't dry overnight on me. Sometimes I will take a damp, not wet, a damp paper towel put in there, yeah. you know, and then a sandwich yeah. bag over it. And then the next day you have time to make sure that everything's sticking good. 
with any of the Roman 555, the Dermagrip, um, the latex, any of the water-based things, um, it's not instant, you gotta babysit them. Anne wants to know, can you inject the inner ear to keep the shrinkage to a minimum? The sh I'm assuming she's talking about the cartilage, and I don't know what, she may, she may be able to teach me something for sure. It'd be like injecting bird feet, I would think. It yeah. would be scary to me, but um, I think, I, I bet you could. Uh, where there's a will, there's a way. James so. wondering, do you shoot those little nodules in the inner ear with any of the stuff that duck guys use? I never have, but I'll be trying it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you know. I learned yeah, more let from you guys know. than you guys let do for know. me. <laughs> Just, we'll keep you posted. Um... Do you have mule deer reference picks too? Yes, there is a mule deer reference CD. We have awesome reference CDs by Phil Wilson out of Alaska. And they're, they're all high res, they're on CDs, and they all have about 100 to 150 um, pictures on them. And what's nice about them is you can print them off, you can put them on your computer, your iPad, whatever, and just scroll through them or make a book out of them so you always have them. But there's some really nice high quality um, pictures. The mule deer has 155 photos and mm -hmm. there Phil's a, an exceptional photographer, not just a snapshot type And guy. we have everything from giraffe to bear to antelope, Desert all orange. the ducks, we got it all. Leopard, snow guy, kudu, kudu um, thinker, zealand, we got them all. And they're good. Uh -huh. You can run them off, they're, they're high resolution, you can actually make posters out of them, out of them if you wanted to. Yeah. Do the epoxies work good for gluing in ears? Done right, they work well. They work excellent. Like I said, we have the slow ones and the fast ones and even Magic Smooth. Um, but uh, make sure everything is as you want it because once yeah. it's stuck, it's stuck. Do I have to card my ears once the deer is mounted? Makes for a nice edge. Um, I don't know that you necessarily have to. Um, but I know a lot of taxidermists do like to use some carding, almost like fin carding. We like to, we, we have that fin carding that we use on fish, and on one side it's it's a solid piece of plastic, and then to get air to the fish it's um, a perforated, like they use for needle stitch, needle point or whatever it is, and we get those in 8x10 eight eight sheets. Um, we like to take that and make carding on the edges to hold our edges nice and neat, and then deer do not have slicked, slicked down hair. So when we take the carding off, we back brush this a little bit to get a little bit of loft in the ear, but it'll give you a really nice edge. Yeah. You can make those and reuse them. Yeah, work I think Mark good. uses linoleum, like linoleum oh, tiles, okay. cuts them out little horseshoey things that go up here and they're bendable. Works really good, he uses that on all of his. Hmm. Um, Doug Dexter wants to know, what liner would you recommend for a longhorn steer? Mm -hmm. Oh man, what I've done in the past, <laughs> my, my experience with that, see here, if we get in something like that, that we don't have a liner for, I can run to the supply company and I can take the cartilage from the steer, I'll get it out in one piece like this and I'll run down there and I'll lay it on who knows what, you know, it might be a it might be a bear ear and maybe got to trim the shape or something like that, or it might be an elk ear that I got to trim. You won't have that luxury. What I have done in the past for people is take your cartilage out in one piece, send it to us, we will make you one. Oh goodness. And we've done that. We've done <laughs> Let's that. Let's not offer that. We just no, <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> yes, we do. It's, it's not hard at all. And we can do that for you. We can make a nice ear for those. Um, we do sell the fabric by itself. Yeah. Would that have yeah. help? Because we sell the sure. fabric in half sheets. So all our ear, fabric ear liners, what it's made out of, we sell the sheets in half sheet and full sheet that you could buy that and make your own, which would be. And then what you would do <laughs> is take your cartilage, lay it out on a flat sheet, trace around it, cut it. You can dip this stuff in warm water, hot water, and you can shape it. Or you can use a heat gun or hair dryer. To toaster. Toaster to make it molten, uh, and then you can shape it. Yeah, hot plate. Or send us the cartilage man, you'll make it. <laughs> no. Do you put blood veins in the ears? I try to, but they never show. Ooh, good question. I, 
I've seen you do some really nice ones for African stuff. We do an African just because it's short here and it shows. And it's something that is so easy to do and customers go, they think you're like God or something like that, you know. And all we do is take an ear liner like this. I usually sketch them on so I have an idea of what I'm after. One, yeah, I mean, three seconds with a little Sharpie. Then I'll take my hot glue gun and I will run a bead of glue. And your beads of glue, of hot glue, are gonna be kind of lumpy and narrow, and lumpy and narrow. You're gonna think you're doing a terrible job. When you put them in, they're a lot like, I mean, look at the blood vessels in your hand. They're lumpy and narrow, lumpy and narrow, and it works real well. Um, put it in with your glue and then just scribe around them a little bit. And you're gonna have to babysit those for a while. Uh, but on African animals, it's well worth it. Um, this is a really early season white tail and we could probably put them in if we wanted to and they would show, but any of our October deer, November deer, December deer, you can put all the blood vessels in you want and all it's gonna do is feel lumpy if they touch it. Um, ear liners are sold, some of our classic ones, in pink and white. Which do you prefer and why the difference? I think Same ear liner, different color. The pink is for hopefully to show through the skin, I think, yeah. and trans transpose, transfer that color through the skin so you don't have to paint as much. Um, we've even taken our hide paste and we've put um, dye in it to make it red or pink so that when we glue it up in, it soaks into that skin yeah, and gives you some color so you don't have to paint as much. Um, it works better maybe than not doing it, but sometimes the results are a little disappointing to me. Um, so that's kind of the same. I've heard of people using pink or red glues that will eliminate the need to paint the inner ear. Does it work? It, it works. I think it's worth doing. I order ear liners, but often can't tell the right from the left. Why don't companies label them for us? I have been there when I started. <laughs> I remember... All our employees are there too. I have to hold them <laughs> up on my head. <laughs> I remember sitting in Daxtermy School saying, how do I know which is the right and which is the left? Um, I didn't know you're supposed to look at pictures. I didn't, nobody taught me that when I went to Daxtermy School. Um, if you look at a good photo, you'll be able to tell that the belly is gonna be on the right, um, the flat part, I mean, this is gonna be on the top. Um, that's, some people might think that everybody knows that, but everybody doesn't. Hold it up for me. Yeah. <laughs> I think this See? is one of the first, this last nine week class is one of the first classes that we didn't have to pull one out because the student had put it in the wrong way. Uh, and they all kind of fit the other way too. Uh, remember, flat on top. An ear when you when you put these when you put your ears on your mannequin, this part of the ear needs to be sheltered from um, water coming from the sky, rain, whatever. Yeah. If you did it like this, water's going to hit that little ledge and scoot right in there. Uh, that ear is always protected, just like a little roof over it. What's the, what's the best glue for inserting ear liners? There's a thousand glues out there. What works the best? Well, we kind of touched on that. I think the best glue is the one that fits your system the best. Um, if you're trying to do an ear that you want to walk away from um, and maybe come back to the hide tomorrow with a done ear, epoxies work really well. We used to do that quite mm -hmm. a bit. Um, my system today is more of a water-based system, so we can taxi and move the ear later on, but lots of stuff <coughs> out there. We use water-based a lot, but with water-based, it's not a stick it in and forget it. It's right. put it in, come back tomorrow, and make sure everything's sticking good. We've even, we've had water-based pull apart, and we've had to tick, stick a needle with a syringe and squirt some more glue up in there and babysit again. Um, any of the water bases, you're gonna want to, you know, babysit a little bit. Do you ever drill holes in the liner to help it stick? I used to do it in my class. Yeah, I used to do that all the time. I would take a Dremel and a tiny, tiny drill bit and I would put, um, I mean, like maybe hundreds of holes just go, you know, all the way around. Um, we've kind of got away from that. Um, 
and use this instead because this little rougher, um, oh, especially on these commercial shiny, this, you can feel that this feels like it almost has a mold release on it. It's so that it will, it's injection molded so it will come out of a mold good. This doesn't just stick the best without some prep work. So you're gonna wanna really rough it up good. Don't change the anatomy, just give your glue something to stick to. Doesn't matter, if you wanna poke a lot of holes, go ahead. If you wanna sawdust it, um, sawdust it. I like the sawdust, you know, that looks good for me. A little tool, a rougher tool, it's a multi-purpose tool. This is an awesome That's little tool. I mean, we use it on all of our deer faces when we're adjusting them. You know, you can taxi it without doing any damage. Now, when we do ears, I tell, especially when we're teaching and students are doing uh, their first game head, for once you've got it ready to mount, don't get overwhelmed by mounting the deer. We're gonna mount one ear, yep. and you're gonna take that ear, and you're gonna make it until we say, that's good. Mount one ear first, go to the second ear, mount a second ear, then we're gonna worry about this. This doesn't do you any good, if the ears don't look good. So mount one ear first, then mount a second ear. And yep. practice, practice, practice is gonna make you really, really good at this. Mickey Shear says, hello, and she loves the shirts, they look nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sold, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> I like them. Maybe. I was talked into it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you got some tools up there. What tools are you kind of been using for your, your I think the stout wrapper is probably one of the yep. small form wrapper. Okay. Small form rougher. We got big ones too. Yeah. Um, like when you're roughing up the whole form, we use those. Got some homemade dowels here, all different shapes for getting things worked all the way to the ends. You can do those with about anything. But um, our number 11 scalpel on a three handle. Is yep, three? that's a small yep. handle. And be yep. careful with that number 11. It's really, really sharp. And I sometimes, when students are using number 11 on, on ears, I take it away from them because you can do damage with it. Um, I, I'm waiting for questions to come in because Mandy gets smiles on her face. Michelle DeWitt says she likes them too. You look great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still not sold. <laughs> um, what's a spray bottle for? Or just um, Really handy to keep around when you're working on ears or any of the leather. Um, Got to keep that stuff, this leather from drying out. And it's nice as you're peeling the ear cartilage away. If it's a little bit dry or a little bit freezer burned, we can mix up a little bacteria side and water and, and have it on hand so we can keep the ear. Remember that skin. slippage is caused by bacteria growth and bacteria um, is caused by heat and um, um, you know just kind of like a, a temperature and bacteria growing in it so if you take um, a spray bottle put a little bit of Lysol or we we have uh, Quat 64 I think it is um, doesn't take very chemical. much. Chem yeah, chemical product. Um, it's very fragrant, smells real nice, and it will eliminate your slippage. I mean, it's very, very helpful. Keeping your area all cleaned up, tables, counters cleaned. Um, let's talk about, is there anything else you guys wanna go over before we do maybe a giveaway? Oh, yeah. What are you giving away? What are we giving away? I don't know, what do you wanna give away? I think oh, I you. We should oh, give a right. set of these. Yes. Okay. Oh, wow. That's a can nice deal. Sure. That is a nice sure deal. Sure can. All right. So for our giveaway today, we're kind of getting toward the end of our hour here. We're going to give you a set of Mark Gonnerings. Set or one? No, we got to do a set. A set. Okay. And a set of Mark Gonnerings forward and ears backward um, reference cast. Um, they're really great. We're going to give them one, but they don't get the other one unless they buy the set. No. <laughs> no, you get a set of two. All right. So what I'm going to have you guys do is everybody give uh, the little video a little thumbs up or a heart. Stay away from the angry face because I do always go and look to see who did it and they don't get candy in their next box. Ooh. I know. <laughs> My three-year-old daughter does not count. I saw she did a whole bunch. <laughs> but, but, do um, they have to share it or like it? Or do yeah, you I want you that? to like it right now and then we'll have you comment in a second. We're going to talk a little bit real quick. For those of you that don't know, we have Machuska Taxidermy Supply Company, and it is, this is our, I don't know if you can see that, but that is our 2018 catalog. You can call us at 1-800-488-3256 or order online at www.machuskataxidermy.com, and 
We'd love to help you out with any supplies or questions or tech questions. The guys are great at answering that. And then also we have Northwest Iowa School of Taxidermy. You can call and get any information that you want to start your career in taxidermy. Wait, wait, wait. Turn around. That's Nikki Shear. Oh, that is Nikki. Type in in the back. Who yeah, moved to the Lake raccoon. Montana. Um, so let's get all those likes and hearts going. And what I'm going to do is we found another question. And I'm going to ask you a question. And I want you in the comments to answer it. And you need to answer it in hours, days, months, or years. Okay. You need to run these past me before you do this. <laughs> okay, are you ready? A newborn fawn can stand in... Okay, hold on. <laughs> oh man, I forgot it already. Okay. How old is a... How old before a deer can outrun a human? I didn't write down the question. I had the facts. So I, I almost know, read yeah. the answer. <laughs> I know that. Yes, by experience. Because, because mm -hmm. I've had to catch a lot of them. <laughs> How old before a white-tailed deer can outrun a human? Okay. I'm not so You need to go by my answer that. instead of that. What's your? No. Okay. Why? Because I know. I've done it more than that Google thing you're looking at. Well, a little higher, Randy Wold. Um, but for those of you, until we get the question, um, we are doing these live videos every Thursday at 4.30 Central Time. I think when schools or spring classes out, we might go a little earlier. But right now, it's 4.30 Central Time. Unless we're at a show, we'll figure something out. Um, and... If you've missed them, you can always go and rewatch them. So if you go to our Facebook page, like and follow, it will tell you when we're live so you can always catch them. But also you can go back and check out. Um, Does their answer have to be in hours or days or what? I saw somebody have it. I just have to make sure they're the first one. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold Was on. it me? Stop commenting. Okay, you can keep commenting. But now wait, I can run pretty days. fast, so, so that might extend the time a little bit. Scott Flat, they, or no, sorry, it's not. <laughs> sorry, Scott. Sorry, no. Scott. Oh, Doug Dexter, five days. I would have to agree with that. Doug Dexter, yeah. it is five days. And I would too. I remember we brought, it was Buddy home one year, and I remember taking him outside to go to the bathroom, yep. and there was construction yep. workers working on top of the roof, and all of a sudden I'm taking him out, and I didn't bring the leash, and here I am running and chasing and diving after him because he got spooked and ran. One time, Buckwheat, when we got him, ran straight off the end of the No, it ran off the shore and started swimming towards Orleans. <laughs> and my wife was in her house coat, and I'm not sure what she had underneath. But she had to run to the end of the dock, dive in, swim as hard as she could oh to turn that deer around and get it back. I'd say five days. That's pretty darn good. It is. Five days. See, that wasn't a bad so, question. No. Nope. Google might. Maybe they do know. A Maybe bit they about do those. know something. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What do you got here? Are you gonna do that? What? Oh, sure. We can talk about our skulls. Um, we do have before we close. We got a new line of reproduction skulls that we got in. We have a really nice um, line right now that are missing the teeth. What do you call those? Just your. They're pinchback skulls. They're a gorgeous skull and they're dipped. Awesome. But now we got a new line that we're carrying and they have the teeth. So this is our new one, which I'm super excited about. Um, it's a Min Mint skull. I can't see if you guys can see that. There we go. The Min Mint skull is there. Um, there's the bronze one. Bronze, good looking one. We have the white, the white camo, or white snow, snow camo. Um, there's... I don't even know what one this one is, but this is a good camo one. Um, they're all found on our website. We have them all listed on the website. Here's a, uh, has the American flag mixed with the snow camo. Pretty cool. And one more, 
one more. This one has antlers. I don't know if you can see it, but it has antlers as well. And these would be like for sheds. You attach your sheds to yep. them. They just make for a really nice display to change it up a little bit. We also have the normal original white ones that are gorgeous, but you can get find all of those online. Um, I think that's all we have for today, but call us 1-800-488-3256 or visit us online at matuskataxidermy.com. And call us if you have any questions on ears. If you start them and you run into problems, we'll be happy to answer them. Ask for Tom or Brett. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We'll see you next week, 4.30 Central Time on Thursday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.